Uh, we have another one for you, so we are ready? Yes. So please warmly welcome Yuri Tsarov. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Yuri. I work as QA architect for a company called Good Data. And today I would like to share our experience of building test-driven infrastructure. So overall, our uh, agenda is we will try to define a goal that we are going to achieve. Uh, we shortly cover a test kitchen project, which it, it is a central part of the story. We will uh, deep dive in into uh, implementation at Good Data, how we bind in uh, test kitchen with Docker and server spec, and I'll try to demo actual test-driven infrastructure change creation and some will group up so it's why it does make sense to us. So the goal, uh, we strongly believe in good data that infrastructure code should be treated as any other development code and meaning that we're trying to apply best development practices there. Uh, in, uh, for us, it means basically applying test-driven development approach for a puppet code. And uh, uh, given this way, we try to shoehorn uh, a process of naturally growing regression test suite. So Test Kitchen is an open source project uh, written in Ruby, originated in Chef community. It's kind of test orchestrator thingy. Uh, if you attended previous talk, it was uh, uh, partially about Vagrant. So you can think of Test Kitchen like a test-oriented oriented Vagrant. So it's very extend extensible and flexible. And basically, you can uh, bake completely different test uh, infrastructure uh, using the same tooling. It has a fancy slogan. That's how they managed to sell it to me. Your infrastructure deserves test too. And it's, written, uh, it's mentioned in a pretty nice book called Test Driven Infrastructure with Chef. So how I will overview how, uh, how Test Kitchen works. It's really simple. It creates VM or container runs configuration management code there and runs any kind of test suite to verify the correctness of this configuration management code under test. So I try to reflect in this diagram, like uh, Test Kitchen has uh, three main modules, uh, each one responsible for a different thing. So driver is for creation of the instance under test, provisioner is for application of uh, configuration man management code in uh, kitchen terms in, in a verb converge, and a verifier to actually run a test suite. And all this happening into isolated instance on the test. So you can configure a kitchen in a simple YAML configuration file. And these are main points of this configuration. So for driver creation, it has a plenty of plugins. So anything from Amazon uh, to OpenStack private cloud and down to Docker. Uh, for provisioner, the same approach. Uh, Mm, it supports Chef out of the box, but also it has uh, external modules which support Puppet, Ansible, SoulStack, and many, maybe something else they emerging from time to time, the new ones. Uh, and Verifier uh, supports uh, also out of the box uh, popular shell testing frameworks and uh, uh, RSpec, one of the most popular uh, framework in Ruby community, and extension of it called server spec for infra testing. Uh, less important models uh, is the transport, uh, is the way how to you actually deliver the uh, testing code into instance, and a platform and suite is a way how to semantically organize uh, your testing scenario so you uh, can uh, override and define some testing constraints here in these sections. Uh, so we in Good Data uh, made a choice and using these specific drivers. So we're using Docker driver, Puppet provisioner, SFTP transport, and server spec verifier. So just to give you an idea of how our uh, infrastructure test pipeline, automated one, works in good data. So first of all, uh, when developer creates a pull request, it goes through a, a relatively fast test of puppet catalog compilation, meaning it uh, compiles uh, catalogs for every type, like server role. Uh, we have described in our infra. Uh, and. Uh, Assuming that everything's fine, it promotes uh, the <coughs> code under test to the next level, uh, which is a test kitchen. Uh, and test kitchen operates uh, uh, <coughs> by provisioning Docker containers. It uh, puts uh, Puppet under test into Docker container, test with there. We also use a streak internally calling it shell mocking. It's a way 
to isolate things in container and get rid of external dependencies. I will elaborate on it a, a bit later. And giving this, this stage is green. Uh, the code gets merged to a, re a relevant branch and it basically goes to uh, uh, actual end environment. An important point that is, uh, according to best continuous delivery practices, the same code is the, is the same code get tested and the same, exactly the same code got delivered into the production. And we also m moving our tests uh, together with our code so instances get also tested in a real environment. And obviously there we have no any kind of mocking. So, Dr. Driver, uh, external model, uh, which supports uh, provisioning our Docker containers as uh, instances under test. I will provide uh, configuration chunks here and there to get you a feeling how it actually easy to configure. So in this example, we uh, pointing the Docker driver to our private Docker registry, defining pr platform for compatibility, uh, just to give a driver a hint which packer manager to use and so on. And some provisioner command which uh, prepares instance uh, for clean states. Here we just uh, uh, cleaning caches of our package manager. Next step, uh, converging. So Puppet Provisioner, also external model. It gets a Puppet into instance under test. And the in most important pa uh, part from a test perspective is actually a facility to override Puppet facts uh, to create uh, uh, interesting test constraints. So here is an example uh, of our Puppet Provisioner configuration. We basically define where to get Puppet code from a kitchen point, uh, and we installing custom facts, uh, meaning that we are writing some actually used facts in our code. Meanwhile, we faking out some external things, like for, for example, this free IPA one-time password, we just faking it out. And on this level uh, of overriding, uh, in provisional level, it means that this uh, uh, facts will be override for every instance under test. Meanwhile, we have uh, uh, ability to override on per instance level later. So transport, uh, original implementation is really underperforming. So luckily there is a uh, already project available called Kitchen Sync. And uh, basically uh, default SCP, uh, we replace it with SVTP and dramatically reduced uh, the upload time. But the reason for that is, is not that SCP is generally worse than SFTP, it's just uh, Ruby implementation in standard library and SSH is somehow horribly underperforming for SCP. Uh, Kitchen Sync also provides uh, uh, rsync support, but it uh, more complex. Uh, requires SSH agent, uh, separate one. So we uh, uh, made a choice of uh, less complex solution. So here we are just overriding it, and that's it. Uh, uh, Service spec test suite. Basically, Service spec deserves a, a separate talk. It's a very rich uh, testing framework. Uh, it's extension of R spec. Sorry, I need to. Get some water. It is extension of our spec, and it provides a rich abstraction of the way how you can uh, test your infrastructure. It's absolutely independent uh, project from Kitchen. You can use it standalone, and. Uh, the way how we do it, we keep in test, uh, tests together with actual infra code, and this way developers uh, can uh, create consistent, uh, semantically consistent PR. So test lives together with uh, production code. So several examples of server spec to give you a feeling how it looks like. It's just chunks randomly picked from official documentation. Uh, so you can see that you can uh, Test really simple stuff like file exists and it is directory to a more abstract things like uh, configuration of running container, simple network stuff, kernel capabilities, and uh, I would like to highlight a common resource type, which is actually most flexible one because you can put any kind of common, test it for STDR, test it for exit status, test for STDR, and so on. And this way you can build really uh, customized stuff out of that. At one point of time, you would probably need to also abstract and create additional custom server spec resource type in Ruby, but you have a big room until you really need it. So, uh, how to actually bind server spec with Kitchen? So, out of the box support from a test kitchen project is called Buzzer. It's kind of 
thing that runs, uh, supports multiple uh, uh, testing frameworks, so it can execute them. But it's very simple, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't scale, and uh, it, it's not very extensible. So we went more advanced way uh, here in the link. Uh, one great guy created like blog post, like good reference implementation of server spec, and we borrowed code from him and uh, we were developing our uh, test suite implementation on top of that. And our implementation uh, matured a lot and we will soon open source it. Uh, but it didn't happen yet. Uh, so, um, how we actually execute uh, server spec? Uh, uh, given that we have uh, this custom test suite executor, we're interested in the uh, invocation of it uh, the same way as uh, in production instances, for example, in the same way in a Docker test container. So we just uh, reused shell verifier, We just allows you to run shell and do some stuff in the uh, test step, and uh, we running the server spec uh, uh, <coughs> there, overriding uh, uh, control variables. Uh, our implementation is uh, can produce results in JUnit, and so we can easily plug it in Jenkins. Uh, this stack, this stack, skip in kitchen, it, uh, if somebody familiar with our spec, it's standard facility to actually s uh, skip the, the test that explicitly mark as, with some text. So uh, the use case for that is that some of uh, the tests written in server spec, in our case, are really end-to-end, -end, and they work only in more like re real environments, and they do not make sense in kitchen, Meanwhile, they make perfect sense on an actual environment. So we keep in the, still the same test suite, meanwhile not polluting the results. Shell mocking. So uh, giving, uh, developing this testing infrastructure, uh, we face the problems of external dependencies and some Docker-specific stuff. Uh, so the way to solve it uh, appeared to be rel relatively simple. So we just uh, <coughs> mocking the executables uh, that are not working uh, during converge, uh, and that are not important for the testing scenario. So it's a simple reverse script. It plugs in during the test instead of package manager, and assuming that the mock is defined, it will replace with, with a defined mock. And uh, given that there are no defined mock, it will just pass the call to a real package manager, and everything will work fine. So the format is really simple package, passed to actual binary or any kind of executable and the mock contents. So to give you a mock little picture, it's a real examples that we, we are using. So package IPA client, IPA client install. We, in a test scenario, we definitely don't want to register container in free IPA. So we just simply mocking it out and the, the resulting, resulting mock uh, we will contain a very simple bash script to uh, um, just fulfill uh, the configuration files and heat up. And the most uh, simple way to do it is like we are doing with 3SD. Uh, just define package, it an executable, and our tooling will just uh, populate the whole uh, I'm a fake something. And it's this way, it's just return exit status zero to success, and it's one for Puppet, and meanwhile, it could be just been true, but uh, here it's just for login facilities. So, uh, also a kernel capabilities. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to not really create a mock, but uh, for uh, in, in this uh, to actually use kernel capability. Kernel capability is a way to allow root access, but only partial. If to make it like a nutshell. So in this provided case, we're using specific capability, CAPSYS resource, and our manifest, uh, for some of our manifests that using NPROC uh, control limit. So this way, actually, uh, allows container uh, uh, to use this kernel param, and it more makes uh, the puppet run green. And if you are going to use that, I highly recommend to Siemen capability is exactly for the kernel under test. You, you're using the testing scenario because these kind of capabilities are heavy deviated from kernel to kernel version. Uh, <clears throat> so how to actually define puppet type in kitchen? So puppet type, in our meaning, it's just server role, instance role. And 
It's not a kind of puppet resource type, it's just uh, uh, <coughs> instance role in our code infra, in our implementation. So uh, we have uh, this control uh, entry point called EC2 data type, uh, <coughs> which is the name of a role of a type basically. So we just have writing on a platform instance level and puppet code, we will use the proper way of execution. And uh, assuming that you're doing it first time, you probably it will fail, you make a decision if uh, you need some shell mock, add some mock, or add some kernel capability, and then repeating, and when it's in green, your type is ready for testing. And you can start happily writing tests. Uh, so, uh, I will try to actually demo that, but given my quite big experience in failing the live demos, I have a recording for you. So, nope. Is it visible? It's not this one, okay, pardon me. Yeah, just a sec. Yeah, this is recording. Yeah, so here we, we starting from scratch and making kitchen list, like to see the list of our adopted types. We have a, a Zulu gating type uh, pre-converged for the sake of time constraints. First we making verification run, running existing tests. Uh, all is green, 82 are fine. Then we adding new tests, which is supposed to be failing one implementing a simple feature. Basically, currently, we are going to just add HTTP D daemon for a Zool puppet type. Yeah, so the idea itself is very simple. Should be enabled, should be running. We're running the uh, freshly created tests. It should obviously fail. And it does, it reflects that we have no HTTP D. And now we are going to implement the actual infra code. We are really going to. Yeah, so basically this is uh, already Git changes. So you see we just included HTTP D model into actual puppet manifest. And meanwhile we have a test. Very simple example, just to have a picture. So now we are going to actually deliver our code into instance under test, meaning kitchen converge run. So it will uh, rerun uh, the puppet within an instance. Yeah, so I will rewind here because it just puppet run. Yeah, so image is converged, uh, instance is converged, sorry. And now we running verification run again. And it's green. Now it's not 82, 84 tests, and a new test passed. So uh, our code fulfills the testing scenario. And if you want to double check things, we can always log in to testing instance, kitchen login type, and investigate with a standard shell. So that's basically it for demo. So again, standard red green refactor. Uh, uh, thing applied for infrastructure code, as you can see. So the question I frequently get after showing this is why, why I should write the same thing in a, both in Puppet and some kind of uh, testing tool, like service spec in this example. So I can uh, assure you that it really pays off at scale, scale uh, meaning that if you have many of replicas, for example, web ones, and you deliver a new change at huge scale, like good data has, uh, something subtle can happen, uh, like Puppet will be mm, reporting uh, all green converge, meanwhile service pack is this safety net that uh, will tell you that something got wrong on a couple of nodes. So it's really helpful in this scenario. Again, next uh, huge point is TDD. 
uh, it really makes the flow and allows you uh, to write good testable code. In case of Puppet, it's more like uh, you have a uh, ability to avoid the idempotency problems and so on and you, during developing your manifests. And uh, on top of that, even that is already useful, you can create more, uh, more tests that would test an actual outcome which is uh, way beyond the Puppet. So here in this example, we test in actual provided endpoints locally. Uh, meanwhile, we have a pretty good smoke test uh, that will assure that everything is uh, configured properly, uh, Kerberos for HTTPD in this case. Yeah, it's uh, server spec plus a bit of Ruby, but really basic one, so I don't think that it will, can be a blocker for somebody. So, wrap up thoughts, benefits, scratch environment. So, testing from scratch is really important from quality perspective. Isolation, uh, we're able to uh, actually <coughs> test everything in Docker even before it gets to any kind of uh, uh, real machine. Uh, easy to test permutations. It means like basically standard, like maybe, maybe manual puppet code test would look like. You're writing new code, you're making puppet knob on a real node, and you see that chunk is fine, you're applying it, and everybody happy, but a couple of days later, a fresh node of the same type is getting redeployed, and something uh, go, gets wrong. So testing, uh, test kitchen provides you ability to actually uh, test both scenarios and in a very automated way. Resource efficiency, yeah, standard Docker selling point, uh, for, but for, for us, we're running private cloud, uh, OpenStack based, and it's really, uh, important for us to not, uh, for example, deploy 10 uh, full-fledged VMs. Instead, we can uh, <coughs> run the same 10 testing scenarios uh, within one VM in Docker containers, uh, and this VM will be just jo Jenkins slave. So we are packing things properly. Test-driven approach, already discussed, uh, and in pretty important part that, as you noticed uh, in Edema, uh, we actually got feedback even before making a git commit, even local one. So you can just test things right away. Yeah, and assuming that you uh, amending all your code with a supporting, uh, with a supporting test, you have a good regression test suite naturally growing. And all these things are really easy to plug into things like Jenkins and create this continuous delivery pipeline. So, open source side of things. Actually, all the things I described didn't come for free. Uh, we were missing a lot of features, and we were adding them, and uh, uh, all the projects I mentioned, we have at least one patch in, and uh, it was a great experience to be, uh, like, uh, to become a Kitchen Puppet core contributor, small project, I'm very, very proud of it. So, we contribute a lot to upstream. So, What's next in this story? Uh, we, as I mentioned, resource efficiency, yes, but still we have a lot of types and we can tell ourselves to run whole regression test suite uh, for all types on every PR. It's just not possible and it's anyway long feedback loop. So we're using another open source project called Puppet Catalog Diff and some automation uh, on top of it, which basically will create uh, catalog, Puppet catalogs compiled on top of stable head branch, uh, plus, uh, and, and <coughs> another uh, bunch of catalogs for, from PR, uh, div them, and from that you will get a type of affected list. It is by itself useful as a feedback for developer, assuming that in this list is a, some type appears that developer didn't expect that his code will uh, influence. Uh, that and uh, this list can be used as input for test kitchen and it will run only relevant types and it will make things much faster. So, not an agnostic approach. Basically, as you noticed, dri driver can be anything apart from Docker. Provisioner can use uh, plenty of uh, popular configuration management solutions. Service pack itself is not bound to any kind of configuration management, so you can test. Uh, Puppet, Chef, whatever, with this testing framework or even manual change if you like, so 
uh, it's really a uh, <coughs> good amount of flexibility here. And for us, it means that we really can, assuming we have this huge test safety net, we can make huge moves, like move from Puppet to somewhere else, or uh, testing major Puppet uh, upgrades from version three to version four. So it, it really pays off. It's a good investment. So uh, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. I tried to uh, make the last slide somehow useful with the links to a project discuss, and I would like to answer any questions. Anybody? Yes? Uh, the <coughs> the main unit is a pop, uh, is a server role. So we are testing. Uh, we have a prescribed amount of tests uh, based on that role. So we are not testing puppet models. We are testing actual infra and this uh, uh, pr provisioned roles of servers as a whole and, uh, and infrastructure as a whole in the end. So this way uh, we can assure that our infra uh, is in good shape. Did I answer your question? I think so. Yeah, great. Thank you. Anybody else? No? So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh,